I don't want to contradict myself because I have a problem. I have a problem because I keep on talking. If you allow me to speak for about 15 minutes uninterrupted, yes. then I will be contradicting myself. So, <laughs> so then to correct myself, yes. so to repair myself, you have to give me another 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, so that's why I don't want to create complications for you and your editor uh. and uh, your uh, viewers. Yes. Primarily. <laughs> anyway, I should try to be very brief to all your questions. Some of the questions are there where I can give you monosyllabic answer, answer yes or no. Anyway, uh, I happen to be the. You want to hear my voice? Yes. I want to be. I'm wondering if I am the if I am the king of Belgium. Am I? You are. For sure. Okay, clap. Okay. Okay. C'est sur un premier. So, could you talk about yourself first and, uh, for example, where you're from and what led you to become a filmmaker? Well, to introduce myself, I never thought of becoming a filmmaker. When I was a student in school, I was not even a a habitual film goer. I seldom used to go to a film. The cinema had, didn't have any attraction for me when I was very young. I mean, I was in school. Then it so happened whenever I saw a film, a couple of films, and mostly Indian films, and more so in Bengali films because I come from a very small town having a flavor of uh, countryside now in Bangladesh. So there there was there used to be one small theatre and then there uh, every year at, on a certain day or uh, on a certain occasion uh, the uh, mobile theatres used to come, travelling theatres used to come to my town. So that is why I was not much interested in cinema and there was no point, there was no possibility of our people to watch cinema regularly. That was the thing. But even when I was in school, I was interested in literature even though my subject was science. Science was my subject but I was interested in literature. I used to read a lot at that time, both in Bengali and in English. English being the language of our colonial master, so one has to learn English too. So, and even now, I have no flair for languages. I know my language, Bengali, and I don't even speak the other Indian languages. There are so many Indian languages. You know, it, uh, India is a multilingual state. But I can speak, I understand, I can write in Bengali, only in Bengali, and uh, talking about other languages, well, I am not good at all. Even though I am the only filmmaker in India now who has made films in four Indian languages. Nobody else has done it. So even without knowing the language, this is what I have done. Anyway, let us talk about the past. So I, my interest was literature. So I used to read Bengali um, fiction. I used to read English fiction even when, when I was in school. And that was how I groomed myself. Uh, I think possibly I had an interest in in, um, in arts so far. And uh, even though one of my uh, writers, the book you have with you, the Dipankar Mukhopadha, he feels that it was not an accident that I came to cinema. But I feel it was an accident. So after uh, having passed the school, school, I came to the college. So I was in my small town, there was a college. So I studied partly there, science, science, uh, with pure science, with physics, chemistry, mathematics. And then later on, I came to Calcutta. That was also before the partition. 
before the Englishmen went away. So during the British period I came to Calcutta and the moment I came to Calcutta I had to, I was terribly interested in, in, in the city. It was very vast and I was frightened by the vastness of the city. I was terribly frightened by the vastness of the city. At the same time I was, I was drawn by the city. Two things grew together, you know. On one hand, I was frightened by the city, the vastness of the city, immensity of the city. On the other hand, I was also deeply impressed by, the, by, by its dimension. So I thought that it is, I'm so close to the world, I thought that I was a citizen of the world, right at that time. So two things grew together in me, and I never thought that I was a refugee. I came to Calcutta to study, and that was United Bengal, United India. But even after, even after India was divided, and uh, technically I could be called a refugee, but I never called myself a refugee because I fell in love with the city. And even then, the cinema was thousand miles away from me. But I used to see films. At that time, I used to see films. Uh, uh, now the Indian films, which I did like, didn't like at all, because with my, with my upbringing uh, uh, in literature, with my passion for literature, I was not interested in the kind of cinema that was that used to be made in India. Then I also saw a few uh, American films which some of them I liked because of its technical quality, which I didn't understand much. But I could see that this, this, there is something here which I find very interesting. I mean visually, sound, sound, optics and sound, two things are very different. Uh, uh, much more different than what I find in Indian cinema. So th this part I could understand that much, not more than that. Am I clear? And then it so happened after I uh, had my, my physics was my special subject. So when I came out of the college, I was interested in addition to other things, I was also interested in sound recording. Because of my interest in, uh, because of the fact that I was, the physics was my special paper. The special subject was physics. So that was when I felt that I should go to a sound studio studio to learn sound recording. I read a couple of books on sound recording. I went, used to go to the Imperial Library. Imperial Library, that now it is called National Library in India after independence. But at that time, during British time, it used to be called uh, Imperial Library. So there I used to go and I read a couple of, along with others, because my main subject, my focus was literature. Uh, but then uh, I also studied this uh, you know, sound recording and I liked it so because of its technical uh, quality. So I went to a sound studio where films were being made, films were being shot. So the owner of the, uh, the studio, he happens to be a friend of my father. My father was a lawyer, had nothing to do with cinema. And my father had the impression if I go to cinema, that will be uh, terrible, that will be terrible. And it will be very difficult for, uh, for him to find a decent girl who will marry me. That is what my, my father thought. My mother also thought the same because they had no idea about cinema. So uh, I, I went there, but uh, so the chief of the studio said that I will teach you everything about sound recording and after that uh, I will throw you out. I will throw you out. I won't allow you to stay in the studio, in the studios. And it so happened I, I um, was there for two, three months in the studio, in the maintenance department. And that was the time when shootings were going on and very important actors were there, used to come. But never for one single day, I was there for three months, but for one single day I didn't go to the studio floor to watch shooting. Because I had no interest in it. 
You get my point? And so I used to be there, there in the maintenance department, soldering capacitators for nensers and all. This is what I used to do. You know about it. So this is what I did. But these people, the mechanics there, they were talking about uh, about queer things. They were talking about uh, gods and goddesses, about this, about that, about um, uh, how in the dream a fairy came to her and uh, came to him and gave him something. And these are the things which they used to talk about. Very, very, they were all superstitious people, most of them. And that was not my, uh, the kind of thing which I was looking for. And, but then they were good mechanics, but in their private life, in their private life they were highly superstitious Hindus and I was far, farthest away from them. My parents were Hindus, but I don't call, consider myself to be a Hindu, neither a Hindu, nor a Muslim, nor a Christian, nor a, nor a Buddhist. So I was like myself. So I then, um, I was there for three months without going for one single day to the studios to watch shooting came out. And then what did, what did I do? I thought that I can't learn sound recording here because I didn't like the people there. They were otherwise very nice people but they are highly superstitious people. And uh, my understanding of reality around me was very different from that, theirs. So that was the time I had nothing to do. Nothing to do except loafing about. I used to loaf about and that was the time when I used to go to this, to the Imperial Library I was talking to you about. I used to go there at half past nine, spend the whole day there. And then in the evening at about seven o'clock, when the laboratory, I mean uh, the, uh, uh, the library was closed, I came out. This is what I did for quite a number of months. And I used to read quite a lot of things, you know, whichever came on my way. Some is philosophy, sociology, and then poetry, then politics, and then, um, uh, you know, when the, the poetry, and then fiction, dramas of very many countries. I, and that was the time when I translated a Czech uh, short novel. It was there, I was, I was sitting there while sitting in the, uh, the National Library, Imperial Library, I translated a Czech novel and nobody knew that Czech writer. So I translated it and it was later on it was published. By a, by a publisher who liked it very much. That was my first work in literature. I mean, the only translation of, from the English, not from Czech, because I don't know Czech. And uh, one day I remember when I was in the uh, in the catalog room in the Imperial Library, and I was toying with the uh, with the uh, the catalogs and I found a book Cinema as a Graphic Art it was written by a man called uh, Vladimir Nilsson a, a Russian and he was a student of Eisenstein I didn't hear about him I, later on I came to know that he was a great great filmmaker and it, the greatest of all theoreticians. And that I came to know later. I, I, I used to see his films later on. But at that time, I didn't know him. I didn't know the writer as well, Vladimir Nilsson. He was a student of Moscow uh, State Institute, State Film Institute. Um, and uh, he was a student of Eisenstein, Vladimir Nilsson. I, it was a very big book, cinema as a graphic art, I read the book. Not that I understood the whole thing. I understood 50% of what was written there. But I was bowled over, completely bowled over. That was what it, how it happened. This is one, and the next book I read, that was um, a book by a German 
a German uh, writer. He wrote on the history of cinema, history and the aesthetics of cinema. And the book is called Art of Cinema, Art of Film, which I liked very much. It was not very technical, whereas the other one was highly technical, the Nielsen's book. Nielsen was a, was a cameraman. And this was how I was initiated into cinema. Had I not found a book, perhaps I wouldn't have any interest in cinema. It was like this. So it was, that is why I say my journey into cinema was just accidental. And then, since then, uh, since I, I have, right from reading the book, the first one by Vladimir Nielsen, uh, called Cinema as a Graphic Art, oh, and then the other one, film by Rudolf Arnhem, the German writer. I think it was Rudolf Arnhem which I read first, and then the other one. So, after that, I read all the books available in the period library on cinema, without watching films. So then I started watching films, which ever used to come here the British films, American films, and Indian films as well. I, uh, by and large, I didn't like the Indian films, um, couldn't like, because this didn't fall within the category of what I have learned by now, by reading books on cinema, okay? And uh, then about the, about the American films, about the American films, and uh, the, the, the other films, I mean the British films, and also Russian films, which, whichever which the films which used to come here to the consulate, and Czech films, which I used to see. These are the films which I started liking at that time. And I tried to analyze the films. And we, in the meantime, what happened? I, was, I started all alone, then I could uh, have some. I bumped into some of my friends who were also interested in cinema. I mean, and the kind of cinema which we believe in. So my interest in cinema, which developed by reading books on cinema, and my distaste for cinema, which I developed developed by watching films. These two things grew together. Distaste for cinema. I mean, the ordinary which are shown in, this, in the theatres. So, I grew distaste for cinema by watching the films which are shown in the commercial theatres. And I grew passion for cinema by reading on books which I found in Imperial Library. That was the beginning. And so then we had our friends and in the meantime the Film Society grew in Calcutta. It was Film Society was built by Shatujit Ray. Chitananda Dasgupta, um, who is uh, Harishadan Dasgupta, they are friends. So they and uh, Nimai Ghosh, Nimai Ghosh, he also made a film. He was a cameraman, he was with them. So, and Bonsi Chandra Gupta, a friend of ours, who was uh, also art director of Shatujit um, Ray, a great, great technician, a great technocrat, and he also acted, uh, worked in my films. He uh, did the art designing for my films as well. Not all, quite a few, but he became a very close friend of mine. But he was closer to Ray, for obvious reasons, because <coughs> Ray couldn't do without, uh, without him. Because the only person at that time, I, this is what, I, what is my feeling, only person with whom Ray could have a have a contact, a cinematic contact, was, was uh, Bansi. Bansi and Ray, they grew together and they could understand each other very well. And he was the only man, Bansi was the only man to whom perhaps Ray felt very, very comfortable. Okay? And then we had our own friends, Ritti Ghatak, uh, uh, the Rishikesh Mukherjee, Tapur Sen, the, uh, <coughs> who is now the topmost light designer. Uh, 
to and Shwali Chaudhary, a music composer. So we were all friends at that time. We had nothing to do. We wanted to do a sort of get crashing into cinema, all of us, including Thakur Sen, who eventually left cinema and went in for light designing. So I used to feel, so what is this? Thakur is such a brilliant boy. How is it that he is going for this? It is a, you know, theater and uh, this one, you know, the light designing is a lesser art. I mean, cinema, cinema is a more powerful. This is what I thought. Now the whole thing is, that was the time when I used to think like that. But later on I made a lot of uh, changes in my, my attitude to life, attitude to art, everything changed later on. Anyway, with, with knowledge. As I was growing with knowledge, so I also tried to find the way to, to understand, to appreciate or to accept and to reject things. So, and that was the time when I was also... Sorry, one, uh, one more minute over. with the tape, so we have to change tape. I'm talking quite a lot. No, right? no.